Hi everyone, I'm here at Therapy on the Rocks in our Oak Creek treatment room and today what I wanted to do was go over the most common goal that our skill enhancement participants come with when they come for a week of training at one of our treatment centers. And that is, how do you analyze rotations and upslips in your patient's pelvises and in their posture? I'm going to use this model to kind of show you what a rotation looks like and also to help you identify some of the bony landmarks that we look at when we're assessing our patients. And a rotation is exactly that. It's where one side of the pelvis or, half, or one ilia is rolled forward or anteriorly or posteriorly or back. When this happens, some of these bony landmarks um, come out of perfect alignment. When you have a person with good posture and good a pelvis that's balanced, these bony landmarks are in line with each other um, in the front and in the back. What we look at from the front are our patient's ASISs, or their anterior superior iliac spines. And those are these large bumps that are at, on the front part or the anterior part of the iliac crest. When we have an anterior rotation, quite commonly we see it on the right-hand side of the body. It can happen on the left side, but the majority of the people that come in usually have a right anterior rotation. And when we have that right anterior rotation and we palpate the ASISs, we see that the right one is lower than the left one. If we were to turn this person around and take a look at their PSISs or posterior superior iliac spines, which are these bumps right over here, with that right anterior rotation, you can see how that PSIS comes up higher. So we end up seeing with an anterior rotation on the right, the ASIS lower and the PSIS higher. Now what we're gonna do is look at a live pelvis. Normally when we assess patients' pelvises, we want to be on skin, but for this video, to maintain our patient's uh, modesty, I'm going to go through her shorts. Do you mind if I lift up your shirt? Sure. Okay. To find the ASISs, what you want to do first is put your hands on each side of their pelvis, and what you're going to do is feel the iliac crest. You're going to follow that iliac crest toward the front of their body until you come to two large bumps, and those are the ASISs. We're gonna place our thumbs underneath those ASISs. We're not gonna be on top of them, but we're gonna come underneath them. And we wanna make sure that our fingers are both pointing toward midline equally. A lot of times when people are first doing this, they get a little sloppy with their hands or their fingers on those landmarks. But to get a better reading, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have both of our fingers pointing toward midline. So I'm on underneath both of her ASISs, and as you can see, her right one is much lower than her left one. It's almost about a half a thumb lower over here on this side. So that's an indication that she probably has an anterior rotation on the right. If we were to flip her over, we'd probably see the PSI is higher on this side also. So when someone is lower over here, they should, they should display with a, a leg length longer on this side. So let's go down to her ankles and see what she looks like. So as we come down here and we place our thumbs underneath her medial malleoli, we see that she actually looks like she's shorter over here on the right side. So there's a couple of different things that could be going on. She could have a structural leg length discrepancy, maybe caused by a broken bone in her past. Have you ever broken your legs before? Nope. Okay, so we don't have that one. And she looks healthy, like she doesn't have any kind of bone or soft tissue disease um, that could be affecting her leg length. She could be part of the population, 10% of the population that has a true structural leg length discrepancy, which I doubt. She's probably part of the 90% of the population that when this leg was long from that rotation in the, that rotation up in the pelvis, every time she started to take a step on this side, she ended up pushing all of her weight through this leg and then started to kind of shear her pelvis up toward her rib cage. And that's what we call an upslip. So an upslip is when one half of the pelvis is closer up toward the rib cage than the other side. That affects the pubic symphysis, it affects the SI, it affects everything that's inside the pelvis and everything that's attached to the pelvis, causing a lot of chaos um, in the patient's body, which can cause problems pretty much anywhere else. So, we identified rotations and we identified upslips. Now, how do you treat them? Well, if you haven't taken one of John's classes before, I invite you to come to Myofascial 1 or the Fascial Pelvis class where we go over in much more detail how to treat these areas. 
And if you have taken those classes, come on back for a refresher because you can always learn something new at one of the seminars. I hope this was helpful for you and we'll talk to you later.